Hello fellow Minecrafters, this is Captain Walnut. Today I'm here to talk about a high efficiency mob system that can handle spiders. And that's the one. So first, uh, this is the traditional high efficiency mob system. All you do when a mob spawns on one of these pressure plates, it gets pushed out and away. Um, but as you can see, there's no room for spiders to spawn uh, because um, in the spawning algorithm, a repeater counts as a block. So a spider has no room to spawn here. So instead, we got to figure out a way to leave room for spiders to spawn and still push them out. So this is the way I've come up with. Here, let me turn this into an item pressure plate so you can actually see what was happening. Oops. There you go. So as you can see, when a mob would spawn on this pressure plate, these two side pistons get pushed out too. One behind it pushes the one piston out and the next piston extends. Um, and then the piston in the middle would push the tall mob out if it happened to be a tall mob. So spiders would get push pushed out by these double extenders and tall mobs would get pushed out by this single extender. Each one of these works ind ind independently from each other. So if I had this one going, the other ones wouldn't activate. There. So cool. So I'm going to build this thing and show you how it works uh, while I build it. Um... So there are two main challenges in building this. Um, one, everything's so close together that it's kind of hard to wire everything independently. Um, so I believe I've gotten the wiring down as compact and as efficient as I can, but you know, I could be wrong. Um, and the other thing is since everything is so close together, it's pretty easy to get to have the pistons accidentally become a uh, bud switch. Um, there is one piston that's a bud switch in here that can't be helped. But um, I was having trouble with these two pistons also becoming butt switches, and there's no way to easily update them um, to retract back when the pressure plate was deactivated. So let me just finish. So this is just the outside row would be two pusher pistons. Um, here we go. Um, you got to trigger this piston first and this piston second. So to do that, we're going to use a repeater um, and have to set it to two ticks. Although if it's one tick, it'll get pushed too fast um, for this one to retract this one back. This back one to retract the front one backwards when it activates. Um, and then this piece of redstone will activate. Um, oh, did I push everything forward too, too far? Yeah, everything's forward one too far. There you go. So yeah. So this piece of redstone will activate this piston, and this piece of redstone would activate this piston once pushed up to here. And then we'll have it, this get activated by the pressure plate. So and let me just build it. The path for the redstone is just basically a staircase from the pressure plate. Um, the pressure plate will be on this block right here, and then it'll activate the redstone below it, which will then go to a torch. The torch will go up to activate the pusher piston for the tall mobs. There you go. And when you place that torch, that can't be helped. I can, uh, once I'm finished placing all the redstone, I can, it'll retract back. And then you make a staircase going up, and then you re-invert the signal, um, place a block above it, and then this is how you keep everything isolated from each other. So that's just, oh, and also, so um, this is now a, a bud switch. So you notice when I stand on it, it opens up, but it doesn't retract back once I step come back off the pressure plate. So in order to fix that, all you need is a piston above it. So this piston will get activated by this redstone and it'll force this piston to retract. There you go. So let me just... There you go. Um, and now the only other challenge to do is to keep um, tall mobs or any other mobs from spawning inside here. So you can just use half slabs because half slabs don't cut off the redstone. And then you can fill it in. Um, just 
just to make it look nice, I'll keep it all even like that. And there you go. So you need room enough here for Enderman to spawn. So one, two, three, and then a ceiling. There you go. So that's one module. It's a lot bigger than the other one, huh? Um, and now I'll just build some more so you can see if you didn't catch it the first time around. Remember to set your repeater to two ticks. Will not work if you don't do this. And there you have it. So now both of these get activated by this redstone torch, but the redstone torch that would be here would activate this one and not transmit back over to here. So that way you can keep everything isolated from each other. And there you go, that's how you build it. And just keep doing that in a repeating fashion outward. I'll build one more of the um, pressure plate sections just so you can see it again. Torch there, torch there, pressure plate there, and then redstone everywhere else. And then come back and block off all the places so mobs can't spawn inside of this thing. This torch will activate the next the doll mob pusher. And then pissing above it so the bud switch resets itself. And there you go. Pretty easy. Um, and now I'll show you that this thing actually does indeed spawn endermen and spiders. Oh, there you go. The, these pressure plates are the only places that mobs can spawn. Um, can you guys see in here? Let's plop down a torch so you can see. Yeah. So these pressure plates are the only places that mobs can spawn in anywhere here because everything else is half slept. So since there are spiders in here, you can actually see that they spawned. But I'll uh, go ahead and edit in some footage here of the spiders spawning. And there were endermen in here earlier. I just didn't happen to catch or capture any footage of them spawning. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope this is useful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.